ご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。In today's episode of Gundam Lore, we're getting a bit meta as we're discussing what exactly Gundam Lore is. A question that I get from time to time is Are these stories canon? And well, the short answer is no. But that's no reason to completely disregard them either. Recently, I read the Hunter of Black Clothes manga, and the way that it represented its story was actually very similar to the way that I look at it. So I thought, Why not do a case study with the Hunter of Black Clothes manga? Get ready to take notes, folks, because this will be appearing on the exam. For once, let's start with the ending. Here it is revealed that the story we just read was turned into a book in universe. On top of that, at the time of publishing, none of the other main actors were alive to either confirm or refute the story. This would then, of course, mean that we got the entire story from only one person based on her memories, hearsay, and her imagination to fill in the blanks. So, what if what we just read was that book, but in manga form? The story begins with the author, Saki, telling her fiance, Wolfgang, about how she was accepted into the Zeon army. Although it would seem that her sole reason for doing so was to be closer to Wolfgang. Of course, he wasn't exactly thrilled about having his girlfriend on the front line, and he wanted her to be assigned to rear line duties. That did not happen. One month later, Wolfgang's ship would get resupplied, and amongst these supplies were a brand new Zaku and a certain operator, which they really needed. And as soon as they were discussing the issue, Two gyms were detected heading straight for the ship. They were gunning for Wolfgang, the now infamous hunter of black clothes. With his black Zaku, he'd been ambushing gyms and taking them out with relative ease. Because of this, the lead gym pilot, Brandon, assumed that the only reason that he took out so many gyms was because he surprised them. Unfortunately, both gyms were in for a nasty surprise, and Wolfgang quickly disposed of Brandon's wingman. This made Brandon realize that the Hunter of Black Clothes wasn't just a sham. And while Brandon was no pushover either, he was overpowered by Wolfgang. The Duck Ace was going to be beaten by the Wolf Ace. But just at that moment, a civilian craft entered the battlefield. Desperate to survive, Brandon took cover behind the craft, telling Wolfgang that he was going to leave with it. Wolfgang saw the civilians in the shuttle, and amongst them, a little girl with a bunny plushie. He decided to let him go, but rather than escaping, Brandon opened fire, causing Wolfgang to instinctively fire back. The wolf didn't eat the duck, but it did accidentally eat the bunny. Wolfgang made it out alive, but at the cost of his right hand and right eye, and things only got worse for him. Shortly after waking up, he saw a speech of the duck ace. He had been decorated for shooting him down. The turn of events was completely twisted. Desperate to clear his name, he would continue fighting, and as a disgraced pilot, he found the disgraced Zida to be the perfect match for him. Thanks to his experience, he was able to keep this very volatile machine under control. Meanwhile, at Solomon, Brandon was made aware that the Hunter of Black Clothes was still alive. Fearing that the true version of the story would come to light, he was determined to take him out once and for all. But first things were first. In exchange for participating in a top secret mission, he got an intelligence officer to wipe any data on his gym that could be incriminating. As fate would have it, this operation would also put the duck and the wolf face to face for one final battle, which I will discuss in the next Gundam Lore video. For now, I would like to return to our discussion about canonicity and how I personally interpret manga stories. Again, in a purely official way, none of this happened. But that doesn't mean that you can't incorporate it into your own headcanon, or at the very least, parts of it. Probably the biggest thing here is the shuttle. Even though the story tells us that the Zeon are in the right, our narrator is of course quite biased. But to which degree? And that is up for you to decide. Maybe the wolf was right, maybe the duck was right. Or maybe the truth is somewhere in between. Maybe the shuttle did get hit by a stray bullet, but both parties simply twisted the story to fit their own narrative. Also, talking about bias, our narrator was quite in love with Wolfgang, which makes it very likely that she's overstating his performance and that of his machine. 
At one point, a character was explaining why Wolfgang was so good with his machine, and apparently it was because he was skipping across the surface of the atmosphere like a rock skipping over the surface of water. Now, I'm no physicist, but I don't think that's how that works. Regardless, let's wrap up this video with a crazy interpretation that I thought of while I was writing the script. Just imagine that Wolfgang wasn't actually in love with the author, and that she was just stalking him, and that this whole book slash manga was just like her own little fantasy world, and how she saw everything. So in reality, Wolfgang wasn't actually angry because he cared about her. He was just like, oh no, I'm gonna have to deal with this crazy person again. And of course, during the ship scene, when she arrived on the ship, he couldn't actually just send her home because they desperately needed an operator. But putting that aside, that is all for this video on the Hunter of the Black Clothes and how I look at the manga. Finally, I would like to conclude by saying that the Gundam canon is quite messy by design. In 2001, Dengeki Hobby Magazine gathered a bunch of Gundam experts to do a kind of roundtable discussion about Gundam canon. On some things they agreed, but not on other things. But that's really all for now. If there's still a lot of confusion going on about Gundam canon, I can try to make a dedicated video on the subject and having a closer look at that specific roundtable discussion. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and be sure to subscribe for more similar content in the future. A big thank you to the Patreon supporters, have a nice day, and I will see you all next time.